Hi, now that we've gotten our feet wet and learned some uh, terminology, some vocabulary and, and concept ideas like whale curves and cost to serve and so forth, what I want to do is outline a chronological uh, journey that we need to take. And, it, it, and, and the whole journey has to be powered and enabled by line item profit an analytics. A lot of times people invest in analytics packages uh, thinking, well, I, I'll get a tool and that somehow will build me a new house without a, you know, architect, a blueprint, all that sort of stuff. It just doesn't work. It's just a tool. And if you slice and dice financial numbers, which are symptoms of root, root, root causes, then you just have derivative symptoms, which do doesn't tell you anything except, hey, you know, we stink. We need to try harder and cut costs and, and work harder kind of thing. Um, so here's sort of the chronological step that you, your process you would take, or as you develop analytics, you, you want to make sure that you have the data to populate these downstream uh, needs, if you will. Uh, so first of all, we start off by saying, all right, let's, let's go team read Islands of Profit and, and, and learn all about the fact that, okay, like everybody else, we have these huge cross subsidies, which is a, a huge opportunity. Uh, the next thing we have to do to identify the cross subsidies is we have to develop uh, our cost to serve models, whether we choose to do that in-house and take a lot of time and risk and money and so forth, or just instantly outsource it. Yeah, you know, that's to be decided, or and both. So you can actually do uh, both. Uh, that we'll talk about the in some future slide. But basically, we need a cost to serve model, which then allows us to do these ranking reports, which allows us to do the whale curves. Now, when the whale, when the, when the ranking reports and the whale first co first come out, we come up with a huge emotional hurdle. Uh, pushback issue. And there are plenty of companies that have done really, frankly, I think good enough or crude customer profitability ranking reports. They don't have items and all that sort of stuff, but they, they've, they've done them well enough to sort of identify that big best customers are at the bottom losing money. And uh, people just can't, don't want to believe it. And so it can't be sold or believed and it just stops right there. So they just go back to doing what they've always been doing. So that's a big emotional hurdle that we have to get over. But that's just the beginning of wisdom because it turns out that the fact that an account is super profitable or super unprofitable is a symptom. We have to figure out the root cause or causes of this fantastic profitability or unprofitability. So we have to figure out in advance what deep dive cross analytics we need to find the causes. And that's why you need both sides of the picture. You need customer profitability, but you need line item uh, SKU profitability. The next thing is once we find out the root causes, these are sort of insights, but it doesn't really sort of suggest a specific cookbook, how to recipe, play, or script. We'll call uh, these later on in our change management section, making it happen, you know, the whole issue of execution. Um, and once we come up with our new plays, then we have an issue of how we have to re-educate everybody. We may have to tune up some skills because we, we're doing new things, so we need new skills. We may have to change the compensation for everybody because we don't want to pay them to go get losing business. We want them to, to pay them to get winning business and pay them to co-create winning business because a, a big opportunity for profit improvement is going to come from the, what I would really call profit development or win-win reduction of supply chain friction. Um, and part of what we have to reskill is all of our sales organization, front customer facing people, have to be totally fluent in supply chain from the customer's viewpoint or service value chain uh, economics or building blocks, which we went through in the first question se section. We also, because we can print PLs for every customer, every supplier, we can do quasi, it's contextual and you can do whatever you want. Uh, I happen to be very bold in anybody's face and I haven't any problem sharing anything with anybody and, and deserving a profit for the value I produce, just my personal hangup. But uh, we can share enough information to change the conversation about how we're selling somebody or how we're buying from one of our suppliers, which leads to supply chain co-innovation. And lastly, well, not lastly, eight, uh, once we have these plays, in fact, we say, let's go do it, how do we track them? And we have to track them because otherwise we won't focus, persist, compare, change, continuously improve, and we won't get the, the, the upside net profit improvement development that we might. Uh, and finally, the icing on the cake, we can put in incentives for everybody. 
uh, Wally in the warehouse, George in the truck, uh, Susie the sales rep, etc. So they have a line of sight. In other words, if I focus on these two, three, four things or metrics that are here in my face and indirectly understand and support when and how I can other metrics, I know these things will contribute towards growing the company's net profit faster than before, and I'm going to I'm going to get some sort of gain sharing bonus out of it. So I have to know what's in it for me, otherwise I'm really not going to be that interested or engaged. Um, and we're going to need everybody to help uh, make this journey happen happen. Now, the next nine slides will dive deeper into each one of these uh, nine points. Thank you.